Uh, Privet. How was that? Um, <laughs> woo! <laughs> That's about all I have. Um, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I've always dreamt of coming to this city and have spent the last couple days roaming around, and it's exceeded my expectations. Um, and I'm also so excited to talk about GRID because I have found this to be the most exciting thing that has happened in CSS since I've started working. I think it's going to make our lives so much easier. It's the thing we've been dreaming about and waiting for for a decade at least. Um, so great. I am Brenda Marie NYC on Twitter and CodePen, which is relevant. I live in NYC, and I can never move because my Twitter handle has NYC in the title. Uh, I work as a designer at ThoughtBot, which is a software consultancy. Um, all the designers at ThoughtBot also implement front end within the live applications. So I have gotten a lot of opportunity in the past couple of years to experiment with Grid, because I'm often building layouts from the beginning um, and for many different clients and solving many different problems. Um, but I wanted to get a read of the audience of how many people have used CSS Grid already. All right. A has anybody used it on a live site like you've shipped Grid? OK, awesome. My goal is I want everybody at the end of this talk to feel like they can walk out and use it today without worry, uh, because Grid is the new world of CSS where we don't have to live in fear <laughs> like we have before. And I want to make sure that the point of this talk is to make you comfortable with that, because I feel like maybe you've had this experience at conferences where you walk into a room, and the talk is beginning, and you're kind of curious, and it's something new that's coming out in CSS. And you get more and more excited as the talk goes on. You think about how you're going to use it. And then there's a point, usually towards the end, where browser compatibility is mentioned. And it'll be something like, well, Safari has it now, but Edge says they're never going to implement it. or so, You know, it's like a dream that is never going to happen. And it's just like, come on. Why can't we just have things? Like, why can't we get things? Why can't we get them? Why can't CSS have nice things? So Grid is nice. Grid is nice um, for one of the main reasons is how it was implemented is how I understand is how new CSS is going to be implemented in the future, which is going to make things easier uh, and make things usable right away. So it's because, for the most part, Grid was shipped without vendor prefixes and was instead developed behind a feature flag. So what that means, if you're not familiar with the feature flags, so this is uh, two months before Grid came out last year. It was shipped in. Uh, three major browsers in March of 2017, Safari, Chrome, and Firefox. Um, and you can see it queued up. We're going straight on Can I Use from red to green without any in between. And there's these little flag icons, which basically just means you have to enable on your own computer an experimental flag saying, yes, show me the experimental CSS. So this saved us from the vendor prefix drama of while they're like Flexbox, while we were, while the browsers were still working on Flexbox and getting things refined, we were already using it in production, and then we created a mess that we had to clean up later. But we couldn't do that with Grid. So when Grid went live, it's been worked on for years behind the scenes, and it's ready to go. It's very consistent. Um, and this is today. I have the Russian Federation up there. So even globally, it's 88% of browsers. Um, in Russia, it's 76%. So it's very, very widely supported. Um, we'll, talk, we'll talk about IE. Don't you worry. Um, <laughs> our favorite exception. Uh, so it's not 100% true that there's no vendor prefixed version of Grid. There is one, and it's only for Internet Explorer or for, for Microsoft. And that's because originally Grid was made by Microsoft 
and I think shipped in Internet Explorer 10, um, but they abandoned it and then was picked up by the other browsers and more fully developed. So the TLDR, too long, don't read, is it's a, the early version is not the realized full version, and it doesn't have all of the features. But don't worry about that, <laughs> because you can not even, I actually have no idea what the differences are, because I don't need to if I write grid a certain way. And that's how I'm going to tell you what I do. So step-by-step -step guide, step -step guide to writing grid. Your first thing, identify a good use case. Um, Grid is here to solve a lot of problems, but not every problem, right? It's just another tool in our toolbox that's going to help with a lot of things. But I think a lot of questions I've been getting are, well, what's better, Flexbox or Grid? Am I ever going to need to use Flexbox again? And they're different. And they're, so they're different tools to use for different problems. So uh, the easiest way to break it down is that Flexbox is great for laying out items in one direction, right? In rows. Uh, what Flexbox gave us was columns, too, where we could wrap columns. But, you know, like, this is, this could be a float. This could, you know, we were trying to do this in many ways. Flexbox just became the better way to do it. But it, none of these things, floats, Flexbox, were ever made to do what we've forced them to do. And we'd end up with things like this, right? Everything had to be perfect to make our wrapping like, work the way we wanted to. We'd lose our, our grids. So what makes CSS Grid different is it allows you to lay elements out in two directions, rows and columns. And we, we really haven't been able to do this. We could do it, I mean, in tables. <laughs> we could do it in absolute positioning, but it's breaking the layout, it's not flexible, it's not fluid. Um, grid allows us to really position things deliberately, but also keep them within the flow of the page. So, I mean, this looks kind of like the front page of every grid framework you've ever used has an illustration kind of like this, right? When you think about rows and columns as these big blocks, um, but to understand the grid spec, I encourage you not to think about it like that and think about it like this, where there's lines and elements l lay in between the lines and take up space in between the lines, the, the lines of rows or columns. Um, so basically, what I started doing when I started learning about grid was whenever I would reach for a normal layout property, I would think, can I use grid for this? Maybe I'll just experiment and give it a try and see how it goes. Um, most of the time, in five minutes, I was like, cool, that's done. <laughs> um, so an example I'm going to go through is a side project that I made. It's this little website called Grub Gallery. And um, basically, you type in a location, and it uses the Foursquare API and gives you a list of images as a result. So it's like the perfect grid that you use everywhere of just a bunch of, a bunch of things. Um, oh, I do want to show that it's, so this grid is responsive um, based on browser width. Here we go. Yep, I mean, we're not, I'm not showing you a layout you haven't seen 100 million times, right? Um, so how, what's the code look like for this? Uh, the markup is simple. Um, here, I've taken out a bunch of the stuff in between and just showed what's important, which is our parent element, which is the unordered list, search results, um, list item is the child element, and just like Flexbox, grid, you style on the parent, and then it affects the children. So those are really the only two elements we're worried about here. But actually, we don't really have to do anything to the child. That layout was achieved by four lines of CSS. And these are the four lines. Um, so I'm, I don't want this talk to be about like the very nitty gritty of Grid, because there's so many great resources out there to learn all the syntax. And I have some links at the end of my slides for that. But in you know, basic terms, this is saying, hey, 
on this element make all its children and only direct children fit in this grid. I want this grid to be in columns, make it however many columns you need to, to make each element at least 320 pixels wide. And if it, I want it to fill out and always be kind of evenly spaced with however many columns it is. Just figure it out, browser, you do the math. Um, to make it all, if it can't be 320 pixels, just make it, just make it work. Uh, and just repeat as many columns as you need to do to make, to make this work. Uh, and I want a 10 pixel space in between. Uh, the padding is the same as the gap because I wanted to have edges be the same as the gap in the middle, but wow, like how many times like in floats is that there's that last one, you don't want it and you want something to be full width. So I think that's actually like a very simple power of grid is that it's automatically full width and if you make c gaps in between, it's just gonna only do that in between. You don't have to cancel anything out. Um, so I've got my grid code, great. So what about the older browsers that I still wanna support? I can fall back gracefully using feature queries. Um, who here has used feature queries before? This is the best thing ever. Um, so <laughs> this is like, oh, I can't believe, I feel like I learned about this only when I started learning about Grid a, uh, a couple years ago. And, and this, this is uh, the CSS gods answering our prayers. So uh, it works like a media query, but instead of checking browser width, it's checking support for a property within the browser. So this is just saying, hey, browser, do you support display grid? So you want to put the property as well as the value because, I mean, every browser supports display, but not every browser supports display grid, right? And then just like a media query, I wrap the code that I want to run if that condition is met inside of it. Uh, and what makes feature queries so great, they're such a great companion to Grid, is that every browser that supports Grid also supports feature queries. So you're very, you can be very confident that if a browser supports Grid and you wrap it in a feature query, it's gonna run. Um, look at all that green, woo! but not Internet Explorer, but that's okay, it's okay. Uh, so just to kind of as an example, I know this is small, but I wanted to show the amount of code I've written more as like, this is all the code that you needed to write, and maybe it's not that much to write two sets of code for something. Uh, so this is my Flexbox fallback by itself, and it's you know display flex, flex wrap. I've got some calc to make the columns. I've got some media queries to make it you know depending on browser width change how many columns I have. So this is how we've been doing things forever, right? I'm doing the math because I'm better at math than my browser, probably not. Uh, and so in order to you keep the fallback, what I want to do is have my fallback be my default and be first. And then underneath it, I'm using the cascade to my advantage. I'm writing my feature query with the grid, which will override anything that came before it on any browser that supports grid. Um, and so I just wanted to point out for the child in my Flexbox fallback, I had to write a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't need in my grid version. So I had to cancel it out basically at the end. I have a, a feature query that just margin zero with auto gets rid of all of that for my grid layout. Altogether, this is the amount of code that I wrote for that layout with the Flexbox fallback. And, and grid. That's really not that bad. I'm not using any JavaScript. Um, I'm not, and I'm using Flexbox, which I don't have to. I could use floats. I could use something that's even more widely supported and really cover all my users if I needed to. Uh, but I've got a really great experience going for people in modern browsers. Uh, so the biggest takeaway for this technique is that fallback first as the default, and then put your grid code afterwards so that it can override the default styles. One thing you don't want to do 
is do, with feature queries, you can do a not. So you can say at supports, not display grid, and then put in your fallback. But you don't want to do that because there's browsers that don't support grid that don't support feature queries. So if you have your fallback as the default, you know you're covered in all cases and just wrap the feature query in the grid code, with the grid code. Two kind of gotchas that I've come across, and I've been writing grid in production since it launched, so about a year and a half. Uh, grid, make sure grid is disabled in auto prefixer if you use this technique. So this gets around having to be aware of what the difference is between the old spec and the new spec. Your Internet Explorer browser is just going to get the fallback and never see any of the grid code. Um, so this is the current default for Auto Prefixer in version 7.0 and greater. I believe that shipped in June of last year. Uh, but if you're using an older version of Auto Prefixer, you can change this in the configuration or upgrade your auto prefixer. Um, the only other problem I really had was that I work on a lot of Ruby on Rails projects and we have testing suites. And SAS Rails is using an old version of SAS which doesn't know all the new syntax. And I don't think it's ever going to because it's being deprecated. So I broke the test suite just because I got a bunch of SAS errors, even though the code worked because it was just CSS. Um, but I tried to get around that in some ways that didn't work, which I'll show as an example. Um, but that's it. Like, those are the only problems I've had. I really have not come across any browser inconsistencies that were a big problem um, compared to other new CSS specs that come out. This has been really, really smooth. and really, really powerful. Uh, I'm going to show you now a few examples of some of the things I've done in the past year and a half. Uh, what I've done are really, like, there's so many awesome things you can do with this that we couldn't do before. Like, we can create new layouts. I'm not really doing that here. I'm using it for, like, what we do every day. Um, and I wanted to show you that so that you're encouraged to like start learning this. And once we start using it in the things we do every day, then we're going to continue to push things forward for new and exciting ways. But we have to learn it first, right? So I'm going to jump. Oh, first, my disclaimer. So when I was making this talk, I went back and looked at my old code to show here. And I was like, oh my gosh, why have I? This is terrible. Like, this is broken. I can't show this. But um, so it's OK that when I look back on my old code, I sometimes say, whatever was I thinking? Because that means I'm still learning and growing. But, but right, that's true. Like, you want to be better than you were six months ago. Um, and I'm going to definitely show you some <laughs> examples of that. Uh, so first, I'm going to kind of tell you what I'm going to show you. And then I'm going to go into the browser. And we'll check things out in the browser. Um, so. First is um, just a cool example. It's, it's almost the same code I already showed you. This is a car website that I worked on selling cars. And this like, list of a bunch of cars for sale is a template that's reused all over the site. And just using Grid gave me some advantages that I didn't even think about while, when I used Grid. Um, the first time I used Grid was on this website, which is basically a blog. Um, and it's like the index page of a blog with all the lists of articles. And I'm using media queries, even though you may not need media queries. This is a good case of when I actually wanted to use a media query. Um, and I'm able to like really place something deliberately and then let content flow around it in this layout. Um, and then I have a layout that is something that I prototyped for a client and they didn't go with, but um, I'm trying to find a place to use this layout because I really, really like it and so I wanted to show it. Um, and it's something that I don't think I could accomplish in CSS today. Uh, I, I want to write a fallback for it that's like something totally different so it can be like, look, it's okay, it's totally different. Um, and then the last is my current client. We had to redo the entire website in like a really tight deadline, working off of comps from a design agency. 
and we just used grid all over the place, no fallbacks, to get it out. Um, and been adding things back in if we needed to, but so far it hasn't been a problem. But um, I wanted to show this as an example because it's all over the place and you can see a lot if you check out this place. So, um, and then after I go through things, I will share some resources where you can learn some more about Grid. But first, I'm also using um, Nightly, Firefox Nightly, because Firefox has amazing de like inspector tools for Grid, and then Nightly gets all the like latest and greatest when it comes. So I, I recommend Firefox if you're using Grid, and I'll show you some of that. So um, I don't think we need to look at that. Let's look at cars. So what is really, so I'll show you, well, no, I'll just kind of show you what makes this advantageous. So, this is an Elixir Phoenix site. This is a template that is just show me a list of cars, right? Um, and it's, it's basically the exact same code I just showed you, which had the grid template columns, auto fit, min max, 320. I always go with 320 because that's kind of like the smallest screen size for a phone, I think. Um, I should check on that. Uh, but like this layout has, a filter sidebar all, like next to it, right? So if I wanted to m know when I first coded this what the browser width was, it, I have to consider this filter when I make my media queries, right? But this is a template that, for example, is also used on a vehicle page at the bottom under related vehicles. This is the same template. Um, but w because I used grid, I don't have to worry about the browser width because it's almost like I'm having a, a container query, you know, with, I mean, one day maybe we'll get container queries, but this is kind of the closest next best thing to that. I didn't have to change any of my CSS. I knew this would work. Like this template will work in any layout if it's 50% of the page or 100% of the page, um, which is really, really powerful. So my next example is, as I said, my first example, and it's interesting because it's totally broken, <laughs> I'll show you, but it's not because it works. So I feel like this is something that I've gotten a lot from clients, which is we want a newsletter subscription in the middle of a list of things, but we want it kind of here sometimes, and we kind of to the top, but not all the way on the bottom, but not totally in the top. So here we have this, but, but this is generated by a, you know, this is a list generated by a backend server. So to insert something in the middle of that and then have it change responsively is kind of complicated. But with grid, it wasn't complicated at all. So here, when this goes to two across, I've got this going down to the bottom. And then when we get to just, you know, one across, now this goes to the bottom. So let me show you what this looks like in the browser. So I'm gonna inspect. Um, so this is some of the cool things. Can we see this? Let me like bump this up. Is that visible? Everybody okay? Okay, cool. So over here I've got in the layout tab, I have a grid, look at this, this is what's coming. Flexbox Inspector is gonna be cool. They're working on this still, so it's a little buggy in Nightly, but um, I think that's cool. Uh, overlay grid, so this is showing all the grids on the page. I only have one. If I click on it, it's going to like, give me a nice highlight, showing me my grid, uh, gives me the numbers of where all my lines are. This looks like the illustration, right, that I showed earlier. And, you know, the space in between is the gap. Um, I can also change the color of this if my layout is, you know, on a dark background or something to make it more visible. Um, and then I can click on this little guy here and it'll take me to my inspector where that uh, element is. So now I'm on that element 
in this toolbar. Uh, so what's interesting, if you look at this, this isn't being used, <laughs> right? Uh, right now on this parent element, all that's working is display grid and the grid gap. However, I've got this like responsive thing with columns and, and this is something that, what's wrong with this code? If we look at it, what it should say is repeat auto fit min map. This is what it's supposed to be. But this was a case where the first time I broke the test suite, and I was like, what's breaking the test suite? And I figured out was the repeat syntax. And so I basically did that thing where I like messed around with the syntax until it worked and didn't really understand why and then shipped it. <laughs> um, so this really, there's a little, you can see like a teeny little shift if, if I enable this or not. But the reason why it doesn't need there to be there is because Grid is so smart let's look at like this little subscription box. I've had to deliberately place it. And so what's happened, so in my DOM, I have that whole list of all the articles. This really needs pagination. Uh, and then at the very bottom, I have that subscribe box, right? Um, and I'm placing it within a media query and I'm telling it where exactly to be. And I'm saying, I want you to be at grid column three, grid row two, and place yourself there. And so the spec is so smart that it's like, oh, well, if you're putting something on line three, I guess you want three columns, so I'll just make three columns and let everything else go around it. So that's why this isn't broken and actually works is because I've placed this deliberately. And same thing here, I have a media query to change this to be grid column two, grid row three, and like bump it down a row. Um, and then it knows, oh, you want at least two columns and I'll, I'll go everything around it. So, um, but one other really big consideration that I think this is a good example of is that we need to, we're replacing things. You know, I'm moving things around different from the order in the browser. Is that something smart? Is that something I should do? Uh, so I recreated this not broken in CodePen um, as an experiment because I wanted to show you visually, this looks better in, um, in Google. Just, I wanted to show the focus event. So I'm tabbing through. So when I tab through, it's tabbing through the order that's in the HTML and then goes back up. For this use case, arguably, I think this is fine. It's not that, like, that different. It's not changing things too much. Um, but it's something like I, I didn't consider at, at the time and thought about later that I should have considered and we need to consider. Uh, I love to say with great power comes great responsibility. So Grid is giving us all this power and we need to make sure we're using it and not, um, not abusing it. Uh, cool, so this is my really cool article prototype. So my intention with this was I wanted a full height image that had a header, fixed to the bottom of the browser window, um, and that could have white space. I wanted to be able to have white space and it be okay. Um, and so, and I wanted the picture to be able to be however wide it needed to be naturally. So this is the natural size of this picture, and the white space is just filled in when it needs to be. Um, and, this is, and this is just responsive. Uh, I wanted the, header to be flushed to the right, but I wanted, and this was the tricky part, the body content underneath to be centered. Um, so think about that. How does this know to stay aligned with the centered area, but also stay all the way to the end where these margins, which like you would normally do margin auto, like how is it gonna know how to do that? and stay aligned with what's underneath. Um, and so taking a look at this, I've got my article. I'm gonna 
pop it over here. Let me make this bigger again. Um, also, I can go back to that window by clicking grid in, in this too, and that will take me over here. So I can really bounce around really nice while I'm inspecting things. So uh, here I'm, I'm displaying grid on my parent, right, my article. I'm creating three columns, one FR, so FRs are new cool unit that just kind of takes up a it's a fraction of the space. So I'm using it here like it's a margin auto, but instead of it just being margin auto, it's creating a column that I can fill with something, which is really powerful. So I have one FR on either end of one column in the center that is at minimum auto, so that will work on my small screens, and at maximum 73 characters, which I think is a unit I had forgotten about for a really long time when I'm trying to do good typography and keep things legible, why not make it and 73 characters instead of trying to figure out how many M's 73 characters could fit in to keep my content legible. Uh, and then I have two rows, 100 VH, which makes my nice, you know, full page image, and auto, so everything else below is just gonna be however long it needs to be. And for each of the children, over here, each of these children, I have the figure, which is my container, I have the header and the body. So, coming back, let me make this bigger now, we're not looking there. Um, I'm telling it to be one through four, which is the whole space, 100% across, and just be the first column from one to two. Uh, and then the header, I'm instead, it's almost the same, but I'm starting it at column two instead of at the beginning at column one. So I'm starting it here, right? And so again, I'm starting my body in the same place so I can keep things nice and aligned. Um, and then I think at one point I just turn off the grid and just let this flow like a regular page. Um, but this was an example too where I was really able to keep the semantic markup without creating all these crazy div containers to place things where I wanted to. Um, this is just very simple markup, article, figure, header, a section with copy. Uh, cool. So. I'm just checking my time, I'm doing great. Last example I wanted to show is, uh, I've been waiting for this because I feel like every time I need to design a navigation, I've designed so many navigations, and they're always so hard, they're always so hard. But uh, I've been waiting for a navigation to come my way which had a centered logo because I feel like those are always strangely complicated because you want it to be absolutely centered, but then you want the content on either side to, they might be different lengths, so how do you keep something centered when everything else is a different width? And I usually end up absolute, absolute positioning things, and then they would overlap because then you don't know how wide everything is, but with grid, this was so easy. Uh, I did a different, um, technique here, which I think is also incredibly powerful. Uh, so I just noted a bug with Mozilla that this doesn't work on position fixed, <laughs> so, um, which is kind of neat. But um, you can see these little names. I, I named these grid areas in my CSS and told things where to go. So again, this is, this is an example of my visual hierarchy has this centered logo, but in my DOM, it makes more sense for the logo to be before the navigation, right? Um, but this still works visually that the logo is the most important thing when it's centered. Uh, I've been playing around with all these things and now I can't get to my window. No. Nope. So. All right, thank you. Uh, but but tr trust me, 
<laughs> in the HTML, it's logo, main nav, and account nav. Um, and then I'm declaring this by, I can at least get there, awesome. Display grid, grid template areas. So I'm giving them a name, each main logo, main nav, logo, account nav, and the way they are. And then I've created, again, one FR, whatever the size of the logo is, just keep it in the center, and then one FR, and that kind of balances out on either side. Um, this is also a case where I said we did this very fast, and I didn't use fallbacks, but I felt like your navigation is really important. Like, it should have a fallback and work everywhere, at the very least. So my fallback is in Flexbox, but if you look, my fallback is a totally different layout and it's totally fine. Like, you, if you came to the website and it looked like this, you might be like, wow, that logo's a little bit close to the navigation and I should fix that, but the goal was to make it look okay and be totally usable if grid wasn't possible, so this accomplishes that and that, was, that accomplished my goal. So I think this is a good example of like, we don't have to make everything the same in every browser and it can still be totally usable and not uh, disruptive to somebody in an older browser. Um, cool, so that's all I've got for the examples, and just the last thing I wanted to go over was some great resources to learn more. Uh, most everything I've learned is from Jen Simmons or Rachel Andrew. They've been evangelizing Grid and trying to get people excited to use it for years. Uh, and they have so much great content out there about it. Jen Simmons has a YouTube series called Layout Land, which goes into more things for CSS, even besides Grid. Um, but she, she explains things really well and is very inspiring, as well as giving a lot of practical advice. Uh, I, particularly added a couple articles from Rachel Andrew that talk about the FR unit in detail and autofit, autofill, min max, which were things that I used in my examples today. And then uh, I especially wanted to point out an article by Natalia Shelburne, who works at The Times, where she used, made a SAS mixin that's like 10 lines long that, over, that makes Bootstrap a fallback and she can write grid on top of it. So she's very easily found a way to progressively enhance her part of the New York Times and slowly get rid of Bootstrap. Uh, that's something that I think is the way to go with this too. Like if you change your whole layout at once, then people don't know how to maintain it, and it can, it can be more cumbersome. Um, I like this technique of let's slowly, in you know, legacy websites or websites that are older that we maintain, that we may use a grid framework, we can just slowly start implementing the new things until it takes over and we don't need that grid framework anymore, and then we can remove it. Um, if you are interested in those differences between the IE grid spec and the new grid spec, if you're really that nerdy, um, which I am, then <laughs> these are some really good articles that talk about those differences. And then I, some of the examples I've shown, and then I have some more like basic grid examples if you just kind of want to check things out, and a bunch of SVG things, because I had a SVG period. Uh, I have a code pen, Brenda Marie NYC, and then the, the whole grub gallery thing that I showed, I wrote an article about and went through basically everything I went through in the slides if you want to check that out as well. And then these are available on my website. You can find it under presentations, or you can also just go to that link. I will also tweet it, and those are the slides for this conference. And that's it. Spasiba, thank you so much. <laughs>